with us this morning. Uh, welcome to this service of worship. In the spirit of the psalmist, who said, I will sing and make melody to the Lord. So join in song, prayer, and waiting upon the Lord that we may be refreshed in the spirit and encouraged for the week ahead. Uh, announcements at this time, I have two right quick. There will be consistency after church today. And February the 26th, we have Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock with uh, Ray, Ray Schroeder. So any other announcements? Um, the women's guild books are available. Um, they will be over in your mailboxes, and if they're not in your mailbox, because some of them I didn't put, know to put in, but anyway, we'll put them in today, and they're um, going to be outside the office in one of the little um, things outside the door. I also wanted to tell you that the women's guild is going to be selling chicken pies frozen chicken pies, so anyone who wants chicken pies, see one of the ladies that, and please pre-sale, they're $10 a piece. Um, if you can, get your orders in by the 22nd, I believe is what we said, that's a Sunday of March. We're gonna be making chicken pies on the 28th, which is a Saturday, and we are going to need chickens to be cooked too, so there'll be a sign-up sheet over at the um, office to help cook some chickens. Anyway, if there are anything, let's see, and one more thing, Women's Guild is collecting for God's change. We've kind of let this slide. Dale hasn't been going around checking everybody's pockets for change. So we're going to start this up again, okay? We want to make sure that we fill this every Sunday. That's our goal, to fill this every Sunday. Pennies, quarters, dimes, nickels, whatever you may have, it'll be sitting at the back of the church. I'll put it back there right now. Um, all help is greatly appreciated, and God thanks you. There will be children's church today, too, if there are any kids here. Any other announcements? Okay, let's continue our service by standing and singing the hymn number 225 in the green.
I'm with him to the peak of another mountain. We are called to follow wherever he leads. As the disciples stood in awe at the sound of God's voice. We are called to worship in wonder and praise. Let's join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. God's glory is far greater than we can describe. We praise and worship him today as we do every Sunday. As we approach this upcoming holy season, please help us to listen closely to the word and spirit. Help us commit ourselves anew to God's service through our gifts and offerings today. This time, if our ushers would come forward, we receive God's eyes and our gifts.
Let us pray. Father God, as we remember that day when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain and his glory shone before his disciples and we heard his, your voice speaking to them, we pray that today our hearts would be transformed by the presence of the light of Christ and that we would give these offerings with joyful hearts. Lord, bless them and use them that Christ will be lifted up and that others may be transformed. In his name we ask it. Amen. And at this time, if our children could come forward for the children's message, and Kevin has some words of wisdom for them today. have a picture for you today. I'm going to pass it out, all right? Okay, this picture that I have for you today Um, you can't do it right now, but I've got something in this bag I'm going to give you. You can take this home with you if you'll pass one back to him. These are crayons, and you can color the picture whenever you get home, but don't do this while you're in church. And remember that the only thing you're supposed to color is this picture and any pictures that you have in your coloring books, okay? We don't want to color anything else. Okay, and there you are, sir. Well, no you should. Table. You should. Okay, this picture has six people in it. Okay, let's set it to the side. It won't be so heavy. Okay, so the picture has six people. And the center of the picture at the top is who should be in the center of our life, and that is who? God. Jesus, God, exactly. Now, on. It is a Jesus picture, that's right. Jesus is. Well, it's not Bethlehem, but down, it's up on the top of a mountain, but down from that mountain somewhere is Bethlehem. You're right, because it's... <laughs> in Bethlehem. That's right in a stable. Now, later on, Jesus grows up, though, doesn't he? And this is later on, but Bethlehem is not far away from where this picture is. He was a kid when he was in Bethlehem. You're exactly right. That's good you remember that story. But at this point in time, Jesus has grown up. He's an adult, and he's on the mountain. Now, he's the person in the middle at the top. Now, on Jesus' left-hand side over here, yes, Dale. Isn't that like, those two people next to him are Moses and Elijah? They are, and on the left is Moses, and on the right is Elijah. Now, these are people that were no longer living on earth. They were living in heaven. Uh, Moses at, did die, but after he died. They did. <laughs> that is right. They did name you George after Papa George, and I knew Papa George. He was really a super guy. Very good. That's great. So you know who it is you were named after. That's super. Yes, that's exactly right, too. You all have good comments this morning. Yes, George. Okay. Okay. 
Right, don't color the floor or anything. That is very important. Only the picture and the coloring book. That's all we want to cover. No, not on the bench, just on the floor. And don't color on your hand either, just the paper. No, no fingernails either, that's right. Okay, so getting back to our picture here now. On the left-hand side is Elijah, and on the right hand, I mean, is Moses, and the right-hand side, yes, sir. Don't touch your eyeball. That's a good idea, too. That, that will hurt. That, it is gross. You're right. Okay, so back to the picture. Moses and Elijah have already died in this life. Well, Moses died and was resurrected and taken to heaven. Uh, Elijah actually never died. A chariot came and, and picked him up. Yes, George, what's up? That's right, they sure did. Gold and rainbow. Yes, yes, they did. Uh, the story may not be exactly like that, but that was pretty close to the way that it went. You've got it. Okay, all right, if that's how it was in yours, that's great. Now, but we're going on moving on from Bethlehem now to where Jesus has grown up and he's on the mountain. Now, the three people that are below are three of Jesus. All right, well, if you can, if you can sit down just for a minute, we'll finish our story. Okay. okay. Okay, but we're moving on from Christmas now. That's the Christmas story. You've got that down pat. This is later on when Jesus is grown. Yes, sir. Okay, so in this story, Jesus takes the three men on the bottom, James, John, and Peter. James, John, and Peter, he takes them up to the top of the mountain. And when he does, these two men that have already gone to heaven. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's basically the story. If you didn't hear what Dell said was, these men came down from heaven and were standing with Thank Jesus, goodness. and there was a very bright light, and Jesus' face was bright, and his clothes were bright, and at that point in time, it kind of got cloudy, and oftentimes when it's cloudy in the Bible, that means that God the Father, the Creator, is Don't there. Hit Don't hit anybody. That's a really good idea. So at that point in time, yes, George, what's up? Okay, let's make it quick if we can because the preacher's wanting to preach today. <laughs> That's another Bible story. That's right, but and then they didn't make fun. That's another story. We'll talk about that one on another week. Okay, so I've got something for you, but first we're going to have a prayer, and then I've, I've got some candy for you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these young folks, and we give you thanks for their imaginations, and the, their minds are working so. We know they're inspired by the Holy Spirit, and we ask that they continue to be here with us because they are the future of the church. We give you <coughs> thanks for the transfiguration of Christ on the mountain, and what it tells us the most important thing was when God said, listen to me. And we need to listen to Christ as we enter this Lenten season this next week. 
We pray all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So we're about to say the story when we get out here, so we'll figure it out. Such energy. Isn't that great? I wish I had a tenth of that. That's, yeah, I can sit down. Everybody's out free. Well, that's great. We love to have the children. And so we appreciate that, Kevin, and all the parents who brought children and family. And it's, that is the future of the church. They are. So, and they'll grow up remembering these times when they got to come forward and, and listen to, to the messages. At this time, I would take any prayer requests or praises that anyone might have uh, today. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Let's take all these names that we've heard this morning and join our hearts and minds together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you and we come humbly seeking your praise and your help in our situation this morning. We thank you that you have sent your only begotten son to die on a cross that we might have eternal life as a free gift. And we give thanks that it is because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you hear our prayers and you are attentive to our needs. Lord, you have heard all these whom we have named before you this morning, and we lift them up in their particular situations. We pray that you would grant them healing, whether it be physical or spiritual or mental, and we pray, O oh Lord, that you would comfort those who are sorrowing. Renew them, restore them, and encourage them by the power of your Holy Spirit and your loving presence. Lord, we pray for others who are not named, but whom we remember silently in our hearts. Meet their needs, O Lord, and bring them renewal by the power of your love. We pray for all those on our shut-in list, all those whom we love. Lord, and we pray for family members who may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and pray that they would, that you would lead them into that new relationship that they might be born again and have eternal life. O oh Lord, we pray for the church, not only here but around the world. We know that there are brothers and sisters in Christ who are experiencing horrible persecution in places like Africa and China. We pray that you would strengthen them and that their faith would be a testimony to us and a witness to us that we too might have our faith strengthened. 
Lord, we pray for those who are going through this epidemic in China and now is spreading throughout different countries. We pray that you would bring healing and that you would ease the suffering of those who are experiencing that, bring renewal. Lord, we pray for our nation's leaders, that you would bring them wisdom and wise advisors, that they would do what is right in your will. We remember our servicemen and women who are serving overseas and in places of danger. We thank you for them and pray that you would bring them home safely. We give thanks for the freedom that we enjoy in this country, the freedom to worship as we are called to through your word. And Lord, as we look toward Lent that's beginning on Ash Wednesday, we pray that our hearts would be renewed. Help us to prepare for this time. Help us to confess our sins and knowing that as we confess them, you are faithful to forgive us and renew us. We remember the psalmist who said that the sacrifice that is acceptable to you is a broken and contrite heart. Contrite for our own sins, help us to remember to take the log out of our own eyes before we try to comment on the speck in our neighbors. Help us to live lives in hope and joy and peace in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Exodus 24. Exodus, the story of the Hebrew people's escape from slavery being led by Moses, and today's account beginning in verse uh, 12 is about Moses' climb up to the mountain. Hear God's holy word beginning in verse 12 of Exodus 24. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand as we sing hum number 804.
Now, many of you probably already caught that the New Testament reading was last week's reading. So I'm going to ask you to turn to 2 Peter. And we're going to read 2 Peter 1, 16 through 21, which is Peter's account of this time when he went up to the mountain with Jesus. So beginning in uh, verse 16, 2 Peter 1, hear God's holy word. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When we heard this voice, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. be seated. Let us bow in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we know, we're beginning to prepare for the season of Lent, the time of the lengthening of days we go, it's been a time in the history of the church uh, for fasting and self-examination, confession of sins as we walk with the Spirit of Christ toward the cross and we pick up our cross daily and walk along that way. So Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock here in the church. We will have a message in song and interpretation of the 51st Psalm, we will have the imposition of the ashes on the forehead as a sign that from dust to dust, ashes to ashes, from dust we come to dust we return to help us focus on the sacrifice that Jesus made for our sins. So we're taking a break from our study of the Sermon on the Mount because we want to prepare for this time of beginnings. And I want us to look today at this story of the transfiguration of Christ on the mountain. And we're going to look at a couple of things. First of all, what was this all about? And I would have us to consider that it was about being that Jesus needed to be encouraged and to have hope as he faced his death on the cross. And his father had this prepared for him to be transfigured in his glory with Moses and Elijah there. Secondly... We need to realize that we need to hear Jesus today, to listen to what he says, again, particularly about two things, resurrection, truth, and to love others. And then thirdly, we need to live out that hope and that encouragement in our lives toward others, that they too may be encouraged and find hope in Jesus Christ. So the first thing is we have the story, what was this about? Jesus going up to the mountain. And we know he took Peter and James and James' brother, John. He went up to the mountain. We've heard this. And 
We didn't get a picture, we can't color, but we know what it was about. And when he was up there, remember, his face shone with like the sun and his clothes were bright as light and he was glorified in their presence. And there was Moses and there was Elijah. Now, Moses had died and he was there alive with Jesus. And Elijah, of course, didn't die, did he? He was carried up in a chariot and they were there to encourage him. Now, here's a question. Why didn't God sent an angel to minister to Jesus in this time as he's facing his journey to the cross. Well, I think it was because these were men and Jesus, although fully God, was also fully man. And they had experienced trials and they had experienced temptations. And Jesus was going to experience trials and temptations. In fact, he was tempted just as we are in the same way. Is it a sin to be tempted? No. Jesus was without sin. But Moses and Elijah were there to encourage him and telling him, well, it doesn't say what they said, but I would venture to say that they were encouraging him that he was going to do the will of his father. And that, yes, he was going to be tortured and killed on a horrible cross there, but by that, he would open the way to God for everyone who would believe. And to encourage him even further, then he was glorified in their presence with this bright, shining light. And even most of all, the voice of his father. This is my son, with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Hear him. You can only imagine. Jesus, pleasure at hearing his own father encouraging him with those words. My son, I love. Listen to him. And so he was prepared. Now, Peter in the account today wants to make sure people don't think, well, that's just a myth or a fable. And people today will say, well, we don't believe in this kind of thing happening. Well, guess what? Even in the first century, people wouldn't believe those kind of things happened. In fact, they wouldn't believe that someone could be resurrected from the dead, even in the first century. You know, I hear this comment, well, we're modern people and scientifically we believe in science, so how can we believe that something like this transfiguration would happen? Well, you see, Peter heard that same thing, didn't he? And so he wrote, we're not sharing some kind of fable or myth. We are what? Eyewitnesses to this happening. And we were encouraged by it. And we want you, the readers, to be encouraged by it. So you're hearing it today again, to be encouraged with Jesus Christ as he goes on his way to face his death on the cross. And remember the night before he was crucified Jesus himself in this great prayer to his father ask father glorify me in your presence with the same glory I had before the creation of the world he was looking and longing to be back with his father glorified there after he had done and accomplished his ministry well secondly we need to remember that Jesus heard his father say listen to him we need to listen we need to hear him. And I want to put forth two particular points that we need to hear and listen today. The first one concerns resurrection. We need to hear the truth that Jesus preached of the resurrection. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said, Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet will he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will what? Never die. This is the truth. Did Jesus resurrect anyone in his ministry on the earth? You remember Lazarus? A friend of his, the brother of Mary and Martha. And he also resurrected 
the widow's son in Nain. You remember the story there? Perhaps this widow's son was a young adult and he was the only means of provision for his mother. And so Jesus, with compassion, resurrected him. And then again, Jairus' daughter, remember the synagogue president? She might have been 10 or 12. He resurrected her. He is showing the love of God and providing proof that resurrection is true. Are you hearing the truth of the resurrection today? And the second thing we need to hear in Jesus is his command to love one another. He said, people will know and the world will know that you're my disciples because you what? You have love for one another. And he showed his love for us in that he went all the way to the cross and died for our sins and then rose again. So resurrection and love go together. And he had some very intriguing comments on how we show love. Do you remember when he told the story and the parable or the future coming judgment where he separates the sheep from the goats? And he said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you visited me. Well, he's talking about how he through the spirit is present in those who suffer. And you can show love to Jesus Christ as you go to those who are in pain and who are sick and who are in need. This is my beloved son, the father said. Listen to him. You know, we need to hear the truth, those two things. The truth of resurrection. You know, there's a fear of death out there in the world today. When you say the word epidemic, that causes fear in people's hearts. Uh, you think of the Black Plague, you think of even World War I had the influenza, you heard the stories of the influenza epidemic, killed millions. And now we have this epidemic coming out of China and people are fearful that it'll spread and become a pandemic. We need to remember the truth of God's love, first of all, and the resurrection. This isn't the first epidemic that Christians have faced. The early church, the third and fourth century, had epidemics. And you know what the people did? The pagans all skipped town. They left, including the rich doctors. They went to their summer homes and villas out in the country. We don't want to catch this epidemic. But you know what the Christians did? They stayed, and they ministered to them, and they buried them. And people were so impressed that they wanted to know more about this faith and who this Jesus was. And the church spread and increased proportionately. In fact, the emperor Julian was ashamed of his own pagan people because he was a pagan, Julian the Apostate. He left Christianity. And he wrote and said, the people look at our people and our leaders fleeing from their danger and they're upset and angry and they look at the Galileans, that's what he called Christians, and said they're impressed by their love and service. And so you know what Julian did? He he tried to make a law and a rule that the pagan priests would go and care for the sick and the, and the victims of this epidemic. Well, they didn't do it. You can't just make a law and tell people to go and love the sick and dying because they didn't have Jesus Christ. There's a story recently on YouTube about the epidemic coronavirus in um, Wuhan, China. And it showed pictures of Christians out in the street with their mask on, handing out surgical masks for free to people, along with gospel tracts. Wow. 
You know, the visible expression of love makes a difference. And because these people have Christ living in them, they're not afraid of death. And that leads us to our third point, that we must live out our faith. The faith of love that we have in Christ, but also our faith and our hope and trust in resurrection. You know, death is always lurking in the background somewhere. This church experienced two deaths within the period of five days recently. And we mourn with the, with the rummages and the Warrens and others who have experienced death. And we pray for them and we come alongside them. But we want to remember we don't mourn as those who have no hope. That's the thing. And I want us to look at where that text is because it's an important text in 1 Thessalonians 4. If you turn to 1 Thessalonians 4, in verse 13, Paul is talking here and writing to the church. And he says, But I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who've fallen asleep. He means who've died. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Do you have and do you know the hope that we have in Christ of resurrection? And the Bible says on that day our bodies will be changed to be like his glorious body. You see, God the Father wanted his son to be encouraged with the hope, the hope of the cross and resurrection that Jesus was going to accomplish. And he wants us to be encouraged in the same way. And so we are to live out that hope. And we are to show the evidences and manifestation of that love in small acts of kindness and remembrance. It doesn't have to be something big and overwhelming, but to reach out to someone in need with the great love of Christ. And then to be able to give a witness and testimony. And you say, oh, I couldn't. No way I could give a witness and a testimony to anyone of Jesus. But you know, it's not that complicated. And it can be as simple as I went through a very trying place in my time, in my life. Or a loved one died. And this is your opportunity. And you say, I couldn't have made it without my faith in God, without Jesus Christ. You see how simple it is to open the door in that way. So let us remember what Christ did as he was transfigured and how he was encouraged. And Moses and Elijah there and how he was glorified. And then let us pick up our cross each day and follow Jesus, especially as we begin this Lenten journey. And let us remember the hope and the truth of resurrection each day. And let us show the hope we have in small deeds of kindness and acts of caring. And that we would do those to the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the hope of resurrection that you've given us, for Jesus' death on the cross, and for these accounts by these eyewitnesses that we can hold on to with assurance of faith in, in Jesus through the Holy Spirit and guide us and lead us as we journey to the cross in our own ways. 
that all we do and say would be to your glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 562. Now go out in the world in peace, have courage, holding on to what is good, returning no one, evil for evil. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen.